Hi everyone, I'm Tom Slavica. Welcome to TSPN's News for Today. Let's take a look at our headlines and let's take a look at our stories. The battle between pumps versus gravity pours on with the Amateur Water Agency board meeting at Mace Meadows Golf Course Wednesday, September 12th with upcountry residents to discuss how the gravity fed feed line, the GSL, would affect customer rates. AWA General Manager Gene Mancebo expressed his concern about the reliability of the current pump system, citing electrical communications and maintenance issues that occur especially during winter storms. He stated that several engineers agree that the existing pump system needs to be replaced or a possible catastrophe could occur. AWA operations manager Chris McCade said he reiterated that the current pump system is unsustainable and at the end of its useful life describing the current pump system as a working time bomb. It's rusty and leaking system with 25 years of life expectancy with over, over 35 years already on it. And the water agency expects that early spring vote will take place in March for or against creating a community facilities district, the CFD. If they can get two-thirds of a vote, the CFD will be created as the necessary mechanism by which to qualify for the USDA loan at three and a quarter percent for 40 years. Residents wanted to know how that debt would be paid for. The answer was that a special tax would be assessed to customers with existing water service plus undeveloped parcels that could potentially become water customers of approximately $86 a year or $7.17 per month. Properties solely on wells will be excluded from any tax. Overall, according to the Water NC, water rates will be lower if the GSL is approved and higher if not approved. Replacing the pump system would cost close to $10 million while tapping into a higher water supply and more reliable flow with the GSL would cost $13.4 million, with 40% of that being covered by grant money from the federal government, bringing the GSL cost down to around $8.3 million. That's $1.7 million less. Consultant Bob Reed of the Reed Group made a detailed presentation of the proposed rate structure and the board guaranteed residents that rates captured in the Reed Group report are accurate and that rates will not go up for five years. Some residents questioned whether or not the GSL would really enhance fire protection and were clearly upset about the state's fire prevention tax bill they just received in the mail. And residents were also concerned that the rate study did not account for all costs and that the AWA's plan for the future use of this water by down country users is more than conceptual at this point. And the board believes that the GSL is the most efficient and reliable option and is unanimous in going forward with the project. They believe that a decision needs to be made now, not five years from now. There will still be another public hearing coming up in the next few months, plus a written notice will be going out before the separate election takes place. And David Plank said in a news release, this is to inform the registered voters of Ione that I'm not running for a seat on the Ione City Council on November 6, 2012. I will not be campaigning. Also, that if somehow I am inadvertently elected, I will immediately vacate the position by resignation. The official ballot will show my name as an incumbent. I was unable to officially withdraw. I was out of town on August 15th, which unknowingly was the deadline to withdraw. My letter of withdrawal to the Elections Department was hand-delivered on August 17th. Therefore, I'm asking that all registered voters in Ione do not vote for Councilman David Plank. I am officially not in the November 2012 election. I sincerely apologize for any confusion in this matter. And according to Sean Krilicic of Calaveras Grown's Livestock Processing Project, animals raised here in the foothills are not processed here, which means they're not only transporting animals unnecessarily, unnecessary distances, but also losing all of the economic value gained when these animals are processed into meat. Our current livestock processing project looks to change this by providing the tools for members of our community to implement a livestock processing facility right here in our own region. Through a USDA grant and the work of our steering committee, we have come up with a number of viable potential options for facilities that would serve the Central Sierra foothills. This will be the subject of today's news inter interview with Sean Kurlitic. Now let's take a look at our weather. Should be a nice weekend, cooling off just a little bit. 
We'll have a high of 94 today with a low of 64 winds out of the southwest, 3 to 5 miles an hour. On Saturday, sunny high 93 with a low of 61s, winds out of the west 6 miles an hour. And on Sunday, sunny high 91 with a low of 59 degrees. And our air quality index report, ozone levels are unhealthy for sensitive groups today at 101 and they should be moderate over the weekend with a little bit of a cool down. I guess it's going to be moving into the 100 and below range. So stay with us. When I come back, I'll have Sean Kurlitich and we'll be talking about that USDA meat processing plant here in uh, Amador or Central um, or the region. So stay with us right here on TSPN. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN.